Welcome to part two of um, the day two video series. This is the second day of me creating a uh, iPhone game with Coco Studio, and I'm gonna go through some uh, some of the things that I uh, learned on day two. So the first video we talked about tile map background and scrolling your tile map, and this video part two is going to talk about a joypad controller. So. Uh, like I said earlier in, in part one, I took a lot of the joypad um, information out of a website called 71 Squared, tutorial 11 on joypad, and it actually ended up being quite easy, so I'll just take you through that. I only have 10 minutes, so I'm going to probably have to go through this pretty quickly. But, um, we come down here to set up a joypad image. So all I'm doing, so forgive me if I skip some things, but I want to get this into 10 minutes. I have my joypad images, so I have an image for the actual joypad uh, shape and, and look for the bottom of it. And then I have a cap that actually moves around when you move your finger over top of it. So I just use the, the sprite, CC sprite, to stick those in there. And that's how you do it with Cocos 2D. Uh, set up the joypad location, so I did uh, set up the, the center point, the max radius, so that's the radius of your actual joypad image, your PNG image, the width and height of that PNG image. And then your joypad, um, I'm going to make a CG rec uh, that defines the area that joypad is in. So when I touch something, I can say whether my touch is within my joypad area. Uh, then I have my joypad cap location, which I'm creating a uh, CG point with the uh, joypad center, X and Y. Then I have my image location for my actual joypad, my image position for my actual cap, so I put those in there. And then uh, I have my player position, which is from my uh, day one when I position my player. And then finally, you just add all of this stuff to um, so self add child. You add all these images, the joypad image and the joypad cap. You'll notice I added Z to the player, Z to the cap and image, just so I have some layering. So I want things, so images are one on top of another in the proper order. Uh, and then I'll come down here. The method I added here was the update method. I'm going to leave that till be later on. I'll talk about it. First, I'll come down and say about my touches. So I have three main touches for my joypad. I have a touch began, touch ended, and touch moved down here. First one is touch began, so when I put my finger down. This is a boolean, so I want to say if touched, if touch, then um, this create a CG point with a touch began location. So I do that here. Touch began location, I convert that to, to GL, so I have it with my landscape and all works properly. If my uh, CG rec contains point, so my CG rec from up here, which is the joypad rec, if it um, contains the point touch began in location, then do this. So I only want to do this if I'm touching within my joypad. So in my NS log, I just said joypad touched. Change my joypad moving to equal yes change my uh, joypad touch hash to equal the touch hash. So it recognizes this touch as the one that's going to be continually on the joypad. When I release, it's going to release that hash, which I'll get to down here. The touch ended, same thing, boolean is touched. If touch hash equals a joypad hash, then do all this stuff. So if my, when I release my finger, if that was a touch from my joypad, then I'm going to do this. Reset everything back. So joypad moving is no, touch hash is back to zero. Player angle, player's uh, speed is zero. Cap location is set back to joypad center, and then I position the cap so it springs back to the center here. Okay. Um, then I come down to touch move, which is the the main section that controls everything. We talked about this in uh, part one of day two to, uh, video, um, but here's the part that deals with my actual uh, joypad and moving the player. So within here, I create a float uh, difference of x and a float distance of y, which just takes the joypad center, so the center of my joypad, and subtracts the touch location, which gives me a difference. Um, then I have my distance, so my actual distance, which would be from the center to the touch. I use a square foot, x squared times, uh, or plus y squared, gives me that. Uh, and then I stuck this section in, just so I can calculate um, that I'm only calculating distance within my joypad area, so I can't touch well without my, or can't move my finger outside of my joypad area, and then all of a sudden the guy starts moving really, really fast. I don't want that to happen, so I have, speed. Uh, if distance is less than joypad max radius, my speed equals distance. 
But if it's more, so if my finger actually moves outside of the joy pad, I go to else and speed equals joy pad max radius. So that's a quick easy way that I learned to, uh, or that I implemented that. There might be another better way of doing that. Um, but then I come down here, touch angle. This is more so if I'm controlling my player up and down, not only sideways. I'm not doing that at this point, so this doesn't really do anything for me right now. Uh, too important. But the player speed, I just have match speed. So here's speed right here. Okay. And then I come down here and say, uh, I want to make sure that my image from my cap of my joy pad doesn't leave the area for the joy pad area. So I say, joy pad cap location, CG point make, and just set this so that the angle and the joy pad actual center location is within my uh, my total radius of 50 for my joy pad. Uh, else, if it does if it doesn't go outside of that, uh, if the distance isn't more than the radius, then just put the joy pad cap location wherever I'm touching. And then I have joy pad cap location. I, I set that up, and then I run this very important thing here which is my scheduler to my update method. So I go up here to my update method and it's going to update based on time. So I use CC time. I give it a name of a delta and I just set my player location based on the delta, so the time, times the player speed, which I calculated down based on my joypad movement. And then I multiply that by the cosine of the player angle. So that doesn't really matter right now actually sort of does. If you have the joy pad on an angle, so pointing up and to the right, then you're actually moving X less than if you're going straight over to the right. Um, player Y, I have that commented out because I don't want them to move up and down just yet. It's too, uh, my scene doesn't actually allow that to work properly, so commented that out. Finally, I just set my player location based on this new stuff here. Player location X and player location Y. So there's X and Y. So the Y doesn't change, but the X is going to change based on delta and player speed. So that's that. Let's see how much time I got here. Seven minutes, good. So hopefully I didn't go too fast there. Um, I'll try and write some of it in my blog later on about how I did some of that stuff. And also I'll have the link to 71 squared where they go through uh, that in its full entirety. So mine's actually chopped down because it's imported into Cocos 2D, which you don't use. Uh, you don't have to use as many of the things. Uh, like this time I used from Focus 2D and some other things, but I'll uh, show you what happens here, so I'll just build and run this. Okay, and what we're going to see is, uh, once this actually pops up here, so I'm going to hit the menu item here. It's going a bit slow today. Okay, there we go. So, I think that's just my computer thinking, it's not the game running slow. So, uh, I can actually, I'm just noticing now this frames per second is actually about 10 less than it used to be. It's going to be running at about 40 frames, 45 frames per second. But anyways, without that, we still have our background. I can move around. This is created with a tile map. I have my player here. This, this won't actually move if I click on it. But you can sort of get a sense of how my clicks work. So if I'm clicking out here, it does nothing. If I'm clicking, if I'm moving my mouse, it doesn't move the player or the joypad. It just moves the background. But if I move over top of my joypad, and actually move that, it just moves this, not the background. And whatever I move there, it's moving the player the same. So he's moving. Oh, it's a bit finicky with a mouse, but he's moving backwards. Right? Up and down does nothing. Doesn't move up and down because I didn't I turned that off. So he just moves left and right. Okay? And he'll probably just move right off the screen. So what I have to do is set it up so the screen actually moves based on the player's position. So if the player gets to a certain coordinate on the screen, then the background scrolls. And that's sort of how a 2D side, side scroller works, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so I don't actually scroll anything but um, the background when the player hits a certain point, and then it's going to scroll. So that's that. That's that tutorial. So hopefully that works for you. And, uh, I'm going to try and do some other cool things for day three. Um, so hopefully you're learning something. So in two days here, working on Coco's 2D, I've managed to create all of this, which is, I'm pretty impressed with it. I don't know, most people that might be good at this might think this is pretty pathetic, but I'm pretty happy with what I did here. Create the menu, create the scrolling, create the background, and that's that. Alright, so I'll talk to you on the next video. Bye.